Let's turn our attention to other employees we know about, employers we know about who are doing very similar things. There is the Bradgate Bakery, part of the same group that owns the famous brands we all enjoy, like Ginster's Pies and Serene Loaf. But the pay they are offering staff is a lot less tasty than their food. Bradgate has written to all of its Leicestershire staff detailing the changes to their wages. Most shop floor employees at Bradgate were earning just over £6.70 an hour <coughs> before April 1st. So the introduction of the national living wage should have made quite a difference for them. But Bradgate, like B&Q, have found an opportunity to save money. And this is because of the universal truth that companies will usually pay their workers a lot less than they can afford if they can get away with it. Would my friend give way? Thank my friend for giving way. Um, does she agree with me that part of the problem with this is that employers see um, the living wage, the national living wage or minimum wage as a floor for payments rather than a ceiling, so they're always going to try and pay the least that they can get away with? Just to say there are 13 speakers after. We're already well into a good debate, and I'm just right that we might be squeezing other members. Okay, John Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I take your point. Um, certainly, the uh, national living wage doesn't mean that that's all employees, employers can pay. Uh, Bradgate, like B&Q, found an opportunity to save money. So the bakery has changed staff terms and conditions to phase out double pay for Sundays by 2019. This means that while employees on national minimum wage earn 13.78 per hour working on a Sunday last month, by 2019 they'll earn just £9 per hour. That's the national living wage according to Bradgate Bakery. Extra pay for night shifts, Saturdays and overtime are also being scaled back. And what this means in sum is that Bradgate workers are being sold a lie. They are, they are told that their pay is increasing, but what the government is giving with one hand, Bradgate is taking the other. According to one very worried worker at Bradgate who approached my honourable friend for Mitchum and Morden, the, these cuts will affect the whole range of shifts that run in the factories. This means that by 2018, a production operative on night shift will be paid £2,778 less a year, while a night shift team leader will pay, be paid £344 less. I want to make a few things clear. Firstly, increasing the minimum wage is not a bad thing. My honourable friend for Mitchum and Morden, myself and indeed all honourable friends, were proud to be part of a Labour government which introduced it almost 20 years ago. Yeah. And we wholeheartedly support moves to increase it. Our workers work hard and they deserve to earn every penny that they are entitled to. And we quite agree with the Chancellor that Britain does deserve a pay rise. Secondly, despite what they say, businesses can cope with the increase in the minimum wage. Every minimum wage rate rise since its introduction has been greeted with predictions of doom and gloom yeah, yeah. by a minority of employers, but these dire warnings have not come true. Thirdly, we all know that businesses will tend to pay their workers less than they actually can because that's what profit making is all about. But business should not be cutting staff pay via terms and conditions to offset the costs. Despite what they say, there are alternatives. They can improve productivity and invest in the skills and talents of their employees. They can cut back shareholder pay just a little so those who work hardest get the remuneration they truly deserve. Or at the Chancellor's suggestion, they could use the further 1% corporation tax cut announced last month to fund the increase of the minimum wage. Fourthly, we have discussed B&Q and Bradgate here, but there is an industry-wide problem. 